Welcome to Physics 123, lab number three. This is resonant standing sound waves. And today we're going to be looking at, um, similar to the previous lab, how we had uh, resonance in standing waves in a wire, except this time we're going to be using, examining uh, longitudinal sound waves and when they are in resonance. Okay, so the equipment that we're going to be using for this lab is this uh, pipe. It's just a clear airtight pipe. And at one end, we have a speaker. And this speaker is connected to a, um, a sine wave generator. And when we plug this in, oops, it will produce a, a, a sine sound wave input to the speaker, which will then come out of the speaker here. And then these sound waves, these longitudinal air waves, which we know is sound, will come down the pipe and then it'll reflect off this stopper here. And this stopper, we can adjust, and you can even hear it when we have resonance, the amplitude of the sound, the, the like decibel level, uh, audibly goes up. And so we can adjust this and find where there's resonance and then um, just measure this distance here. And that is the, you know, from that distance, we can find a lot of cool things like the um, wavelength of the sound waves. Okay, so here we have the sine wave generator set at 700 Hertz, so you'll want to notate that. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to pull back the stopper to change the effective length of the tube and look for, um, well, listen for resonance where we hear the amplitude um, of the sound waves go up. So this, could you, if you could, maybe I'll go back and just listen to try to hear where the sound s seems louder. And once it's louder, I'll try to position the stopper there, and then we can measure that. Okay, so it seems like that is pretty loud compared to the other ones, and so this is where we have a resonance peak. And so if we grab this ruler, we're gonna measure this, this distance labeled L, from the start of the tube to where the stopper is. And so, take that value down. And that's your first resonant uh, length. And now we can move on to find the second one. We can hear the sound decrease quite drastically when we move out of that resonance. Here it's hard to pick up. I'll go a little bit past just to make sure that we're still on the that we're right on the resonance. And then I adjust it back. So it's really loud like that. And this is our second resonance length. So and maybe zoom out a little bit. Okay, so that's 34-ish, 33 point something. Okay, now we're going for number three. Quiets down when we're not in resonance. And here we are picking back up. So there's your third distance, and then we'll do one more. And those are your four resonant lengths. Go ahead and turn this off. Um, that's all the data that you need for this lab. You should have in the beginning, you should have uh, drawn out what the uh, kind of in similar, uh, similar form as this, where you could draw 
what the waves would look like for the um, first four positions. And then based on that, you should be able to calculate the wavelengths. And um, then from there, you can just do some numeric approximation to try to compensate for this delta L here. Because in all actuality, if we look down here, this speaker is not right up against to the tube. So there's some length here that the, the standing waves are extending out. Now it's not all the way to the speaker because it's no longer enclosed, but they are not exactly on the end here. So that delta L, you just want to numerically experiment. You know, I'd probably start with, I don't know, around a centimeter. Try varying that and seeing how your answers look. Again, you want them to be consistent. And so um, that, that's the key there. But it's, again, just using the data from before. If you do get stuck on any of the uh, data analysis or any part of the lab here, um, go ahead and keep watching. We'll include a couple, couple, um, a couple extra helpful hints at the end here. OK, so one thing while well, you're doing the first part of this lab that you need to, to think about and be aware of is that at the end of the lab, or at the end of the tube here, we're always going to have um, an anti-node, right, where it's open. And then at the, the end where the stopper is, we're always gonna have a node, okay? And so if you think about it, the first one, the first resonance value will be where this is a node, and then the end is an anti-node, right? And the second one, we have to go to the next anti-node. And then you just repeat that for the first four. So that's, in case you get stuck on the first one, that's how you need to handle that. For this part and finding the, the wavelength, it's pretty straightforward. You just use the formula, right? Velocity equals um, frequency times wavelength. The frequency should have recorded, and then we just recorded these, these L values. Now, the last part is a little bit more tricky because um, the fact that this speaker is not right up against the end of the wave and the end of the tube means that um, this standing wave will actually come out of the tube a little bit and we just measured this L was just from the end of the tube to where we had the stopper and so um, really somewhere it should this L really should be somewhere closer outside the tube now it's not necessarily going to be all the way to the speaker because it, it is open right and we in order to have these standing waves we need it enclosed and so it's just gonna it, this standing wave is just really going to extend some portion out from the end of the tube to the speaker and so what you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to, you know, make an estimation, you know, like 0.01 meters and then plug that in to your values. And the key is that you want these wavelengths to be the same. Um, and so, you know, you try 0.01 then try 0.015 or 0.05 and just try to get a delta L that is close, that makes all of these wavelengths pretty close together. Um, and so just go by your discretion, what you think is, is correct, um, or at least close enough. Uh, I would try at least three or four um, delta L's. And if you want to know where to start, um, we can measure over here. And the speaker is about 1.4. So this gap is about 1.4. So that's going to be like your, your high end, right? You know it can't, this delta L kind of fudge factor is not going to be more than 1.4. Uh, centimeters long so you can maybe start at one or I don't know you pick but just this is called numeric numeric uh, approximation right we're just numerically evaluating different um, delta L's that we can add here and see how it affects our values and once we get the, all the values to agree that means that we have a correct delta L and then that's what you're going to record there so thanks and good luck